Hello everyone, welcome to our Teen DV Month webinar, Teens Helping Teens. Thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Brianna Rawlings and I'm on the communications team at the National Domestic Violence Hotline and Love is Respect. As you may or may not know, Love is Respect is a project of the National Domestic Violence Hotline. It was created uh, to support young people who have been affected by dating abuse. Um, and today we're going to be having a conversation with uh, young people and adult allies about some of the ways that they have worked to um, empower each other and empower young people to support each other. Because as we know, uh, young people tend to turn to other young people for support. Um, and we want to be sure that we are empowering them uh, to build healthy relationships, to positively support each other, and to be able to locate resources when they need them. Uh, just a couple of quick housekeeping items. As attendees, you will be muted during the webinar, but there will be some time for a Q&A at the end. So at that point, please use the chat box in the control panel to ask your questions. And we will do our best to answer as many questions as we can. Um, I'm very excited to welcome our panel today. Um, we have a couple of uh, young people, Isaac and Leanne, who are from a local high school um, here in Austin, Texas. Uh, we also have Monica de la Garza Cones, who is the principal at Martin Middle School here in Austin, and Anitra Edwards, our youth organizer at Love is Respect. We also have Michaela Thomas, who is a Love is Respect advocate. Uh, so she is one of the people on the lines um, answering chats and texts from young people who contact us. So I'm thank you all for being here. And with that, I'm going to hand it over to Anitra. Well, thank you very much, Brianna, for that introduction. Um, and yes, I am here with Leanne and Isaac, and we're going to cover the youth panel perspective. Um, again, just want to thank Lee and Isaac for being here because getting this insight from, you know, the target audience that we want to to reach and help, um, it's, it's really great to hear what you all have to say and what you're experiencing. Um, so just, you know, kind of kick it off. Why do you both feel that talking about dating abuse or addressing this issue is important? Well, I believe it's everywhere. Everywhere you turn, there's, there's a relationship, any type of relationship, and something's going wrong or, or going right, but they don't know what's wrong i think it's a very sensitive topic that a lot of people don't feel comfortable discussing especially people that have not experienced it or even people that have i think it's a topic that even though it's sensitive and even though we shouldn't take it as a joke or act so nonchalant about it i think it should still have a lot more praise and a lot more attention towards it and trying to help the situation get better. Yeah, I definitely agree. Like like what you said, um, it's really hard to talk about, you know, dating abuse is, is just a tough topic. Um, and then even just the topic of relationships in general, you know, identifying what's healthy, what's unhealthy, what's abusive. It's, it's very important that we talk about that um, at a young age because it shouldn't take, you know, someone experiencing abuse before they, you know, are aware of what it is. So it's definitely important, I feel, that we address it early on, and that's what Love is Respect, you know, is trying to do, um, or works to do, is, is kind of address behaviors, whether it's healthy, unhealthy, or abusive. Um, and so um, thank you both for that, for that insight. And can you just share a little bit about, you know, maybe what you're experiencing, what you hear from your friends, um, or, you know, where do you all get your information regarding um, relationships? Well, personally, I don't think I've ever gone through an unhealthy relationship um, but I have seen some of the closest people to me have um, like my mom and some of my friends um, I definitely think it's something that when the person is in the situation they're not aware that they are in the situation and it's something that needs more awareness because we need to really get through to these people that they're not in a safe situation Mm -hmm. and that they should get out. Yeah, for sure. What about Lee? Lee what, uh, what about you, Leanne? Uh, I learned a lot from my, my peers, and uh, now I teach my peers about it. And um, most of it I didn't know until I had my training about healthy relationships, like small things that people say are unhealthy. So 
I've learned from my friends and from adults to in training. So yeah. Okay, so it it seems like you've kind of got a grasp on, you know, a healthy foundation of of information regarding relationships. Um, and so you kind of try to educate your peers on that. Um, and I know that you both were involved in, you know, some youth-led programs with the teen dating abuse um, campaign at your school. Um, and you all did um, uh, some assemblies to help educate your school about, you know, relationship abuse. And I was able to attend, and it was really, really great. Um, what, what are your views on that, like the importance of, like, youth-led initiatives when it comes to this issue? Not so much adults telling you what to do, but you, you all actually leading things to kind of educate your, your peers how do you feel about that I think it really gets through them because we're we're them we're each other like they're gonna want to listen to us and be like oh that is true you know I think when we spread the message it works I think back to what Leanne was saying um I definitely uh agree that since we are just like them they are gonna listen to us a lot more cohesively than they would um, to an adult. Um, I think coming from a teenager, any advice, any sort of peer pressure, you tend to have a lot of more influence over that than an adult's opinion when you're a teenager and when you're our age and stuff like that. Yeah, that that's that's definitely really true. You know, we here at Love is Red, we've done the research, we've, we've asked the questions, and it really is a peer-led um, topic. You know, front peers or youth, they're going to their friends when they're talking about these issues. These are the people that you see every day, um, and it's just really important in Love is Respect's role, you know, big goal is that, is to make sure that the right information is what's being shared. Um, and last last question, just, just, you know, before we get over to the adult um panel is to kind of what what do you wish adults would be able to tell you or how can adults help you guys in in this mission adults can help us in various ways all of us are very different some of us are more open to share to adults uh our personal life and some of us are more closed off i think one thing for sure is adults should give us confidence confidentiality and should give us the feeling of reassurance that if anything goes wrong they're here to help i think they should give us our own comfort zone and be willing to cooperate with our comfort level so if we don't want to speak enough they should cooperate with that yet still be there in case something happens sort of like a safety net I, but I do definitely feel that adults should give us better information, talk about more of their personal experiences, especially when they were younger, um, because a lot of the times it correlates to our modern age. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. I think that that's really well, exactly what I was thinking. <laughs> <laughs> Isaac is just so wise. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, well, thanks. Thanks, Leanne and Isaac. Um, and so now we're going to kind of transition over to our adult panel. Um, we do have uh, one more time again, Principal uh, Monica de la Garza Canet. Mm-hmm. Um, and we have Michaela, who is a manager advocate of um, Lovers Respect Services. Um, so, yeah, let's go ahead and get that this portion kicked off. Um, so, we've heard from the teens a little bit about like what's important to be um, a helpful adult ally. Um, and it's really just about creating that culture like on a, a campus where they can reach out for help if they need it. There's that health relationship education. Um, can we just talk about maybe how we can build these kind of cultures on campuses? Um, Principal, uh, Monica. Delegarce, Monica? Call her Monica. Hey, Monica. <laughs> you, Hello. You? Hey, you guys. Um, well, I mean, one of the things that we've done on our campus in order to, to build this culture is to have different layers of support systems for students. Um, all of our teachers are trained in um, how to implement restorative um, justive circles, and those are pretty popular and known for disciplinary purposes, but they're actually best when used for building relationships and and having difficult conversations with small groups of students. And so once um, every two weeks, all of our teachers break out into small groups during their advisories and bring a difficult topic to our students and helps them process what they're feeling, what they're thinking, what their fears are, um, answer any questions that, that they could possibly answer. 
Um, but on top of that, I mean, our, our teachers can't provide all of the services that our students need. So if students have questions or, or if they need additional support services like counseling that go beyond the services of a teacher, then they are referred to um, one of the many amazing services that we provide on our campus. And so we have um, uh, the basic counseling services through our counselors, but then we have a program such as CARI, um, CIS, it was mentioned earlier, we do have community schools um, on our uh, communities and schools in our, on our campus. And then we are also very fortunate to have our own uh, licensed therapist uh, on our campus. And um, we also have a family resource center. So if, if the student cries out and says, you know, this is going on, you know, my, my mom is, is being abused, then we have social workers through our family resource center that reach out to the family and support them in that way. And so just having a, a dense network of support systems for our students, depending on, on what their needs are, is, is something that we've done to support them on uh, different levels. Wow, that, that sounds amazing. Sounds like you, your students are very well supported um, on your campus, and that's, that's really good to hear. And um, you mentioned before, you said that sometimes um, twice a week or every two weeks, you said y'all split into groups and a difficult conversation is brought up um, with your teachers. Is that, is that correct? Did I get that right? Yes, that's correct. And in addition to that, one to six weeks, we will have um, the week of our awards assembly. We, this is a middle school, so we have 6th, 7th, and 8th grade. So at the end of the six weeks, we'll do a rotation where we'll have a large grade level um, SEL assembly. We'll, work, we'll talk uh, to students about ways that they can uh, care for themselves and care for others. And we do like mass uh, assemblies that way, once to six weeks, by grade level as well. Okay, that's, that's interesting. And do you feel like these assemblies are something um, that kind of helped get the message um, out to a, the large amount of students? Is that something you feel has worked? <clears throat> well, you know, one of the things that doesn't work is not following up. And we, we learned that early on in the, in the school year. We had um, an amazing assembly to acknowledge the great work that was done um, through Healthy Foundations and um, recognize the students and, and the things that they had learned, but then we didn't follow it up to um, enhance or support what they had just learned. And so because of that, um, now whenever we have our six weeks assemblies, we always follow it up with activities through our advisories. So it, it really doesn't have the impact or, or effect that it's meant to have if you don't follow it up and, and support the students after you give them the information. But having that, that different tiered um, approach of like whole group information and then small group processing through advisories and then one-on-one -on -one or even smaller group support systems through counseling is what's worked for us. Okay, okay. That, that definitely makes a, a whole lot more sense and, and sounds like a very positive environment to have. Um, and I'm, I'm assuming your teachers are kind of leading these groups and leading these discussions. Um, would, would you say another challenge could be um, counteracting like mixed messages? Perhaps um, we've kind of identified sometimes like not even adults have a great, you know, perspective all the time or what was it about um, relationships or healthy relationship education. Um, and so sometimes we can provide mixed messages. Would you find that that also might be a challenge that you face? Yes, absolutely. And in that case, training is essential. We've gotten a lot of support from our district, from the SEL department, from the multi-tiered support department. Um, and it, it really requires a lot of training and setting expectations with our staff beforehand to make sure that you know we're all saying the same thing and that, you know, regardless of whatever your personal beliefs are, as professionals, we need to make sure that the message that we're sending to students is how they can keep themselves safe um, and, and others safe as well. Right, exactly. And like you said, training is, is very, very important. And I know here at Love is Respect, our advocates go through extensive training 
um, before they take our, you know, our calls and chats and whatnot, because we want to make sure that we're giving the right message, a consistent message. Um, so, Michaela, do you want to talk a little bit about that, like facing that challenge of kind of getting everyone on the same page, make sure we're conveying the same information? Yeah. Um, and that such. Yeah, I think that that's definitely a really valuable thing for all adult allies to be thinking about because we, we kind of come to the table thinking, okay, we're going to, you know, bestow this education um, that we have. And in reality, you know, we all came from, we all grew up in the same culture. We all grew up in the same with the same messages about relationships, many of which, um, as Isaac mentioned, like media, um, there's a lot of really unhealthy messages out there. And so it's important for adults to recognize that we ourselves are going to have some of those unhealthy ideas kind of um, drilled into us as well. And so it's really critical that we take the time to sort of come to a common understanding of what healthy is. Um, here at Love is Respect, we talk about relationships existing on a spectrum from healthy to unhealthy to abusive. And so the first thing that we do when we're bringing in our advocate to work on our hotline is we have an extensive training program to just um, get them familiar with what we as an organization believe that spectrum is, what is healthy, what defines abuse, um, so that we can really be on the same page and make sure, as Anitra said, that we are being consistent and we're not sending those mixed messages. So that's been incredibly valuable and I, I know just, you know, in, in the time that I've seen training groups come through, it's amazing how many people come out of the training and, and realize, you know, I had no idea that this, this unhealthy relationship exists in my life, whether it's their own or a loved one. Um, you know, they came into this work and they're passionate about it, but, but they still came in with their own misunderstandings and th that training really opened their eyes to that. So um, it's really valuable and I'm so appreciative for everyone who's on this call, all of the adults out there who are taking that time to, to inform yourself and, and make sure we're all able to be the best allies that we can. Um. I'm sorry, I'd like to add, um, she brought up a really good point that we all grow up in the same culture and we're all um, introduced to the same ideas of a healthy and unhealthy relationship. But in my school, uh, the demography uh, is based a lot on, la on the Latino community. Um, we come from countries in which they're not as developed, so homes are very broken um, and it's become to the point where it's very desensitized uh, to have uh, the macho culture um, really objectify women and stuff like that so the boys in our school have I'm not I'm not saying that all of them are disrespectful and stuff like that but the majority of them have experienced um, seeing that their elderly their families and stuff like that um, gone through such experiences of um, the women being objectified in situations in which they can't make decisions and stuff like that. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I'm really glad you followed up on that point because that's absolutely true. You know, we all come to this work as Americans, but we also have countless different cultural yeah. backgrounds that come into play. Mm -hmm. So, thank you for adding that. Yeah, for sure. And definitely, even within America, um, I would say like even though we all sometimes see the same messages or, or things like that, they may not all be perceived the same way. Mm -hmm. uh, and we may not, some people or, you know, not all of us get the same examples, you know, from seeing your parents or from seeing, you know, what, what you do see on TV, what you're supposed to. Um, so definitely there is like an overall culture um, regarding dating violence or domestic violence um, that we unfortunately get a lot of unhealthy messages. But you're right, in some different aspects with family, with personal life, you might even get a more, I would say, intense or more yeah. um, harsh mes message that is disheartening, unfortunately. Um, so definitely, thank you for bringing that up, and Michaela, thank you um, for sharing that as well. Um, and so definitely, I, I really in enjoyed what you were saying about the fact that we have to have this consistent message, because at Love Respect, we, we want to prevent and ending abuse, right? So we have to make sure we're getting that health relationship education um, out there. And so can you talk a little bit about um, the best or the ways that Love is Respect kind of tries to get that message out there, that education, um, and the best in that manner? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so Love is Respect, you know, as an entity has so many different paths that we take. Um, we have an incredible website full of resources. Um, we have a, a blog that um, kind of goes in depth in these different um, elements of dating relationships, of dating abuse. Um, a lot of the blog material is written or informed by 
um, our advocates who are taking these calls, texts, and chats. And so they're really um, taking the experiences that they're hearing from youth um, and using that to inform the, the information that we put out on our website. And so that's really um, a, a, an awesome resource for anyone who's kind of wanting to, to sort of figure out where to start with supporting youth. Um, we also have toolkits um, and curriculums for adults. We have um, information for youth too, who uh, like youth organizers who want to be proactive and um, spread that information in their schools. And then of course we have our hotline where um, people can come in. Confidentiality is really important to us, so you know people can come in and they can share their stories and they have a space where they can, you know. Get, um, get information and get support, um, but from a very, um, kind of, we, we don't tell people what they need to do. We don't um, try to encourage people one way or the other. We don't try to impose beliefs on them. We really are there to be a sounding board and to, to kind of provide the information that we have about what healthy looks like and, and what people deserve in a relationship. And for people who are dealing with, um, with dating abuse, sort of what they um, can be aware of. Um, if they want to stay in the relationship, we, you know, we absolutely respect that choice and we talk about safety planning. Uh, if they want to end the relationship, we talk about how to do that safely and how to take care of themselves. So we're really um, empowerment-based um, and very much focused on putting, putting the, the, the chatter or the caller into the driver's seat to determine the course of their own decision, their own relationship, um, because they're going to be the experts in their own situation. For sure. Oh, do I love us. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Michaela, for, for explaining that. That was that was very helpful. Um, and you, like you mentioned, we do have those toolkits um, available for teachers and you know parents who want to look at that. Um, and I think that really does help keep our message consistent. And definitely, um, like you said, for teachers who may not have the background in education, um, can kind of give them a place to start. Um, and then I also know uh, Principal De La Garza Canales, uh, Monica, you mentioned also that you all um, had the Healthy uh, Foundations program on your campus. Do you feel like having that curriculum or that kind of uh, foundation for teachers to kind of go back to when having these conversations, do you feel that has been helpful for you to keep the messages consistent? Yes, absolutely. And, and not just for the sake of a consistent message, but also to assist the teachers who don't feel comfortable having these types of conversations. You know, for, for some of the, our teachers, they're very content-oriented. You know, they're here to teach math. They love math. They're passionate about math. But if a student comes to them and says, I think, you know, I have a, a poor relationship or my, my boyfriend's abusive, then they just, you know, they're not prepared for that type of conversation. So having this type of structure allows them to have confidence in, in the type of messages that they deliver to our students as well. You know, it's um, it's kind of like um, walking that, that fine line of, of confidentiality. Um, a lot of, of teachers aren't really sure about the difference between keeping confidentiality and, and keeping a secret. So that's, that's part of the training that goes into preparing teachers for these types of um, important conversations as well. For sure, that's, that's, that's definitely important. Um, and we also want to make sure, like, the students are getting that healthy messages, and that so they can empower themselves, or they can empower their friends um, to kind of keep the conversation going and to keep dealing with this issue. Um, Michaela, did you want to talk a little bit, maybe, about how we can continue to encourage youth-led initiatives when it comes to dating violence and how to keep teens? you know, like Leanne and Isaac here um, in this mission to kind of help us prevent an end dating abuse. Yeah. Um, I think it's really important to kind of remember and to remind youth that, that they ultimately are at the front line um, as peers and as friends of being able to have a really positive impact um, in spreading the message about dating abuse and about healthy relationships. And um, they have a lot of power, um, and so I think that taking the time to kind of share that with them, um, identifying the, the thought leaders and the organizers um, among youth who are really passionate about um, kind of spreading a message, um, and, and then finding those people and then giving them the tools that they need to be able to do it, uh, whether that's you know a toolkit from our site or 
giving them a space, um, you know, set up a room in the school where they can organize an event, um, you know, just kind of figure out what you can do to support them in facilitating that. Um, and then remember to step back and let them really take the reins of that. Um, recognizing that the, the way that they choose to go about it may not be what you initially had thought. You know, you may not have had it in mind. Maybe they want to do something that's entirely online and you had it envisioned, you know, a class. Um, recognizing that, that they really are, are tapped into their own communities and their own culture, um, whether it's school or, or more broadly online, um, and they're going to really be the experts on what's going to resonate with their peers. So, um, you know, doing your best to kind of guide in whatever way that you feel is supportive and then take a step back and let them really run with it. That's a great answer. It's definitely something that I try to do when I'm in my role and working with teens um, and young adults is, you know, I'm going into their space and I'm trying to talk to them about how they can talk to their friends. Um, and what I found to be most helpful is, like you said, to just listen, you know, mm -hmm. hey, what resonates with you guys? What can I do? What can I, you know, what helps? Um, I, I don't want to ever come and be like, this is what you guys should do, like, because I'm smart, because mm -hmm. I, I mean, I am, but <laughs> that, that shouldn't be like the basis, because I, I was in high school a while ago, um, and what I experienced in high school obviously is a lot different now than what teens are going through, because now they have technology and all these extra things. Um, so it's definitely important to kind of take a step back and to listen and hear from the teens and like what they're experiencing and what works with them um, before we can kind of make any moves. Mm -hmm. So again, just want to Say it again, thank you so much, Leanne um, and Isaac, for sharing with us. I feel like a lot of your perspective was very helpful, um, and I think it would go a long way in how we can continue to empower you guys to help other teams. Um, Principal, uh, I'm sorry, Monica, did you want to add um, a, any more um, on that topic of how to kind of encourage your, your students or how you all maybe help your um, students with any youth-led initiatives on your campus? Um, no, I, I think that what was mentioned earlier was spot on. Just you know, providing that that opportunity for for things to develop for whatever the need is. You know, just having uh, it it needs to look different because the situations are are going to be different. And so then, as as an administrator, as a leader on the campus, providing those resources and sometimes the resources space, sometimes the resources time, and sometimes it's personnel and just you know, providing the variety of resources to meet the needs of all of our students is, is essential. Yeah, I think having, just creating safe spaces where where it's sort of expected that that's going to be the topic of conversation because there aren't a lot of um, environments in our world that are like pre-existing where it's like assumed that you're going to sit down and, and have really honest, vulnerable conversations about relationships. Um, and I've definitely just been bowled over um, doing workshops in the past with, you know, kind of how I just had to basically, you know, light the fuse and then step back. And everyone was so ready to talk and so ready to, to listen to each other and to, you know, make those connections. And all that they had been lacking was a room to do it in and, you know, the message that that's what was going to happen. Um, so I think often it's a lot more simple than we think it has to be. For sure. Well, thank you, Michaela, and thank you, um, Principal De La Gasta Carnes. I just feel like I have to say your name every time. Um, <laughs> for, it is, it is fun to say, Monica, um, for shedding some light on that or answering that question. Um, is it about that time to open up for questions? Yes. Yeah, so um, we do have some time for um, a, a q and A. I also want to point out for those of you um, attending that if you haven't seen yet, we do have a couple of handouts. Um, we've been talking about these um, sort of having these resources for teachers or educators or youth leaders. I know we've been talking a lot about you know educators in schools today, but I think a lot of this can apply to any type of program that works with youth um, or e even even parents. If we have any parents on the line who are looking for some tips and support, um, you know, creating that space and, and really opening up these conversations, I think a lot of this can can apply. Um, to, to more sort of personal situations as well. But these handouts that we have available, the high school educators toolkit and the middle school educators toolkit that we at Love is, Love is Respect created, um, they're sort of meant as guides to, um, you know, create activities and, and facilitate conversations um, in classrooms or in small groups 
um, about the topic of healthy relationships and dating abuse. And so there's um, information, there are activity suggestions. Um, so um, go ahead and download those, take a look. Those are definitely yours for the taking. Um, Can I add one more? Sure. So I also just wanted to say that um, for, for questions about like uh, educational resources or how to start things in your school that's going to go through our website but um, I wanted to just throw out there too that our hotline um, our advocates are trained to support um, individuals who have, are seeing a, a loved one or a friend going through um, dating abuse so if you were a teacher if you're a parent if you're a friend um, and you are trying to figure out how to support your loved one um, we're here for you too so you are always welcome to call us, text us, chat with us. Just wanted to make sure that that was out there too. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Love is Respect is a resource for teens and young people, but also for adult allies or people who are trying to support um, um, other young people. So we do have some questions coming through. Um, I'm going to start with one from Shay, who is asking, um, do you have information about what things are confidential as it relates to dating violence. I'm a mandated reporter, and I'm not sure if all types of abuse need to be reported. Um, but Kayla, are you able to speak to that? Um, I can share what our, we also are mandated reporters, so I can share what that kind of means for us. Um, I don't know if it would vary in any ways, but um, essentially we're mandated reporters of child abuse and elder or disabled adult abuse. Um, so we make a point, if someone is coming in, we make a point to, to identify that up front and make sure that they know how to navigate a conversation without disclosing um, information that would lead us to have to make a report unless they're wanting to, so that we can keep it a safe space for them to be able to open up. Um, our reporting requirements do not um, include reporting intimate partner violence between youth, so, um, you know, in terms of a teen coming and, and talking about something going on within their relationship, um, you know, unless their parents are aware of it and they're doing nothing and, and it would be a concern around negligence, um, it's going to be something that's not necessary for us to report. Okay. Thank you, Michaela. Mm -hmm. um, and then Sam asks, could you tell us more about the Healthy Foundations curriculum? What works best about it? What, mo what is most still needed? Um, how did Leanne and Isaac get involved with they exposed? Were they exposed to a curriculum? Um, I don't think Leanne and Isaac were part. Leanne, they, they're going to a different school, so they weren't part of the Healthy Foundations curriculum. Um, they were doing programs through their own school. But Monica, um, perhaps you can just quickly tell us a little bit more about the curriculum and kind of what your experiences with it were. <clears throat> well, I I would say that. Um, the experience was very positive for for the teacher. Um, this is uh, a teacher that I would say is a great example of someone who feels uncomfortable with these types of, of conversations. But the platform allowed for the the students to to work independently, and then he was able to reinforce uh, the curriculum um, as needed. And then it really opened up. A lot of conversations within the class that, as I was as was mentioned before, otherwise, you know, what wouldn't have happened. It was definitely a, a spark for that. Um, if I could go back and and change something, it would be um, not supporting the the conversation on a larger scale, uh, because this this curriculum was used for one classroom, or actually it was two classrooms two sections, um, and then it was uh, broadly shared at, at an assembly, but we really didn't get, get deep into it after that. So that's, that's something that I would change as far as how we use the, the curriculum. <clears throat> okay, great. Thank you, Monica. And some information um, regarding the Healthy Foundation um, programs. It's actually a curriculum that was created by Everify in partnership with Mary Kay. Um, and the curriculum, it, it is online. It was like an, an online thing, I believe. Um, students were able to take it. In, it's not something they did in one section. It's something they did in a class. Um, and I believe it was, I, I myself took, took it as well. Um, it's, it was kind of separated into three sections. And it was very interactive. It allowed the kids 
um, or the student, I would say, it would allow the student taking it. Um, it gave them different scenarios and kind of asked them, you know, what would you do in this situation? Um, if you've seen something going on with a friend or if you were experiencing something, um, or it asked questions, if, if you had a problem with someone, how would you best communicate it or what type of communication skills um, did you have or how could you better those? So it was, it was separated um, into three sections and it kind of helped build different skills. It wasn't just about dating abuse. Um, per se. It also uh, talked about relationships with family members, with friends, um, and kind of just overall like respect and things like that. Um, and if you had more questions about that or you wanted to get some more information, we can actually connect you um, with the resources so you can get more info. Okay, great. There's actually a question for Leanne. Leanne, don't be nervous. It's not a hard one. Um, <laughs> Leanne, uh, how did you write the skits and rehearse for your dating show assembly? How did we? Okay. Um, yeah, how did that come about? We're in class, and um, <laughs> everyone picked a partner, you know, relationships, and we had it um, a boy and boy, girl and girl, you know, every, every type of relationship. And um, we figured out who were going to be the unhealthy relationship, and we just went on from there. We were like, oh, um, I guess like who was going to be in control of the relationship if it was unhealthy and and who was not going to be in control. So and we just kind of went from there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So the the class that Leanne and Isaac are actually a part of is called um, PALS, Peer Assistant Leadership. Um, I'm not sure. If, I, I think PALS is kind of across the country. Um, but it's it's a youth it's a student led organization and they kind of do various campaigns. Um, on their campus, and uh, Teen Dating TD that month was one of the campaigns that they led, mm -hmm. um, and they actually did a week long um, uh, of events. And the assembly was actually they did it twice, mm -hmm. um, the skit. And I believe they helped their teacher, um, Ms. Tabasco, um, who helped kind of write the skit. Um, and like she said, they they did a very good job of being very representative of different types of relationships. Like she mentioned, they had a um, they had a couple, uh, one of the couples was two males, they had two females, and so they, I think they did an overall um, good example of kind of being representative of very, like what other kids might see or experience. Um, and they had kind of cue cards to kind of um, show like the key words regarding the behaviors for the audience to read, like no, or I'm in control, or I say this, or I decide, uh, or we decide. So that, I thought that was pretty interesting too. And they did practice it. Um, and if you are interested in seeing that, we did do a Facebook Live, um, and it is on our page. So if you like to see that skit that they did, you can view it there. On um, our Love is Respect Facebook, I was yeah. going to do Yeah, I was like actually going to mention that. Yes, on the Love is Respect Facebook page, you can find us on Facebook. Um, please like us. Um, we that that was our Facebook Live event. We we filmed the um, the dating and discussion. It was it was really fun. Um, Nicole is asking if there are face-to-face -face seminars for training for their staff. Um, I don't. That's not something that Love is Respect provides specifically, but um, we can uh, we can send out information after the webinar with some resources that you can go to for for training if that's if that's something that you're looking for. Um, let's see. We have a question from Julie. Um, I'm a counselor in the Austin area. Woohoo, Austin. Hey, Julie. And I'm looking to reach out to people and help spread the message to teens and parents and others about the importance of healthy relationships. What do you suggest I do to be most effective and impactful? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> hi, hi, Julie. Um, this is Anitra, the youth organizer for, for Love is Respect. Um, if you feel it would be helpful to reach out to me, um, I can kind of tell you some things that maybe Love is Respect has going on or things that we've done and what worked, um, maybe what hasn't worked. Um, perhaps if we can provide some resources for you, um, I'd be happy to talk to you about that in detail if you would like to reach out to me. Yes. Um, and I can send out an email as well, an email address. Yeah. Yep. Um, or if you'd like to provide your email address, Julie, I can um, reach out to you. Yeah. Um, oh, I just lost what I was looking at. Um, we have a question from Alejandra. I just started working with a middle school group regarding teen dating violence, and I have found it really hard to get them motivated to go out to get out there and create relationships with possible adult allies. 
Do you have any suggestions of possible activities that might help break down any barriers to communicating and working with adults? Um, Monica, I don't know if you might have something to speak to or to, to say about this question. Um, yes, I, I would recommend doing the activities with the adults. Um, depending on your age group, sometimes you might have to change the topic, but um, if, if your staff is going to be doing circles for the very first time, then, then you run circles with, with your staff. If you are going to uh, talk about a topic that might be embarrassing, then you know, come up with a silly topic that's embarrassing for, for adults and have them discuss it um, as, as peers. Uh, but I think that modeling for your staff is, is extremely important and giving them the opportunity to kind of work out those, uh, those, uh, those fears and anxieties uh, will help break down some of those communication barriers. Um, but I, I would also say that uh, training is, is vital. I cannot stress that enough. Um, before we ran our first circles, we had um, it, uh, the SEL department from our district work on the activities for two weeks before they were presented to our staff, and then uh, they modeled a, a circle amongst their own small group before they did it in class. We also had support staff for those um, staff members that said, I still feel uncomfortable doing this. Um, and that support staff actually included uh, peer mentors. So in some cases, we had students in the classrooms helping the teachers run these, these circles and have these conversations. Um, and, and in many cases where the teachers feel like they haven't built those relationships quite yet, that was very helpful. Okay, great. Thank you, Monica. Thank you, Monica, for sharing that. And another um, example that might be helpful um, is in our educator's toolkit, uh, specifically in the middle school educator's toolkit, um, we have a couple of um, activities in there that might be helpful to do, like, like Monica mentioned, with students and with teachers together. Um, we actually did our, there's a, the, relationship acti um, the relationship spectrum activity um, that we did at a school in Dallas in which the students kind of led the teachers in a workshop um, with this activity. Um, and it really created a lot of good conversations and the, the students were able to give their input, teachers were able to give their input, and it, it was, I feel like it was very effective. So it's a good way to kind of, like you said, open up those doors for communication um, and break down those barriers to make it a little easier to talk about. Because um, there were there were examples of you know healthy relationship behaviors, unhealthy and abusive, and it kind of allows each participant to kind of you know give their own opinion or their own say, and then you know if it's a difference of opinion, then you can the group is able to talk about it. Um, and we kind of made sure to create like a, it was a smaller like you said like circles. I think Monica you said that what you guys do um, it's similar to that like there, it was like a smaller more intimate circle um, participating in that, so the students felt like they could actually you know share what they were experiencing or share their opinions on the behaviors. Um, and overall, I felt like it was very effective. So that, that relationship um, spectrum activity is, is a, a big hit, I would say. <laughs> um, cool, we have a question from Tanya. Um, do you have tips for how a friend can reach out to someone who seems trapped in an unhealthy or abusive relationship? Many times kids want to help, but they don't know how. Michaela, this might yeah. be a good question for you. Yeah, that is a really, really good question. Um, I think. Like Isaac was saying earlier, it, you know, it can be kind of feel like a taboo topic or like you're, you know, invading someone's privacy to, to talk about it. Um, and I think it's really important that we all figure out how to get past that feeling so that we can reach out because we know that, um, you know, sometimes all it takes is someone coming forward and saying, hey, that thing I witnessed happening between you and your partner earlier, that doesn't seem normal or right to me. Um, and that can really help them kind of I'd start to identify the unhealthy behavior. So something that we really encourage is um, just looking for a time when you can talk with them alone um, and really, you know, kind of addressing whatever it is that you have concerns about, being very mindful about the fact that this is someone they care about. Um, so, you know, not attacking the partner, um, addressing the behaviors um, rather than, you know, labeling the partner or making them look like a bad guy. Um, and then really being there and just letting them know that you want to be there if they want to talk. Um, some people are going to want to talk about it, some people aren't, and if they aren't ready to talk about it then, then it's so important that you, you know, 
uh, respect that. Um, but sometimes all it takes is making sure that they know that you are there when and if they do want to talk about it. Um, and then you can also share resources. So maybe they don't they don't want to talk about it with you, but maybe you share love is respect. They'll look around on the website and maybe they'll talk with an advocate because it feels a little bit more safe and distant. We do have a lot of people who come in and say that they've never talked to anybody about it because they're embarrassed or they, they don't want anyone to hate their partner, um, but they feel safe coming and talking to us. So um, kind of just feeling out what, what seems best for them and, and respecting their choices. Awesome. Thank you, Michaela. Um, we are getting several questions about mandated reporting and um, training opportunities. Um, I'm going to send out um, a kind of a, a follow-up to this webinar with some a list of, of resources for those of you who have those types of questions um, and can to kind of take a, a closer look at, um, at that information and possibly reach out to some other organizations that might be able to help out with um, the training the training portion. Um, <laughs> I have a question from Amanda. Um, Leanne, you might be able to, to answer to this. Um, Amanda says, I'm old and out of touch with pop culture. Are there any contemporary examples in the media or in television shows or movies that most teens know of in American culture that features a teen couple who demonstrate healthy, functioning, romantic, um, or intimate partnerships? So like whose relationship goals right now? Like, who's can we think of anyone off the top of our heads? <laughs> I don't really get time to watch shows. Or Leanne, she's I've, just so busy and dedicated <laughs> cool. to school. So I wouldn't say I don't know famous people relationships. <laughs> I don't. Honestly, I wish I could answer. <laughs> I think there's a, there's a couple that I, I read a lot about uh, in Vampire Diaries or something. I think there's a, there's a couple in, in that show that a lot of teens are... Teen girls love. I don't watch it. I, I'm not really sure. Don't don't quote me on that. But I, I think that's that's one. Um, I've never thought about it. <laughs> I'm sorry, Amanda. I thought we'd have more to tell you. Um, I mean, I know. God, I'm I'm so I'm blanking on this. I know. Right I feel like once we hang up, we're like, oh, then, 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 then. then. Um, if you search the hashtag relationship goals, <laughs> well, maybe that's not a yeah, good idea. Yeah, you might see a lot of examples of what's not. Yeah, that's. That's the problem. Do you think any little we'll holding to, hands is relationship goals? Yeah, we'll have to. You know, Chrissy Teigen and John Legend are pretty popular oh, among the, the youth because of Twitter. Yeah. So that's, you know, that's we can't rely on Leanne for this. I think <laughs> it's old country music. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. Maybe, okay, I'll do a follow up on that too. I'll yeah, do a little yeah. Bit. I'll do a little bit more research. Into the, yeah, it's a, it is a good question. Um, well, it is, um, we're at the end of our time right now. I know there are several other questions, um, but uh, we really appreciate all of you being so incredibly involved uh, with our webinar and appreciate you in t attending today. Oh, someone mentioned Sarah Hyland from Modern Family. I know she's had some issues with um, uh, dating violence, I think. Um, but uh, Anyway, thank you everyone so much for attending. Again, um, the uh, educators toolkits are available in the handout section of your control panel if you'd like to download those. And again, I will be sending out um, an additional follow-up with a list of resources um, and answering a few more of your questions. Thank you so much for participating today. Thank you to all of our panelists, Leanne, Isaac, Monica, um, Anitra, and Michaela. Appreciate you all being here, and thank you all for attending, and have a great day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.